Home lad, home all among the corn and clover. Home lad, home when the time for work is over. Oh, there's rest for horse and man when the longest day is done. And they go home together at the setting of the sun. Carriesbrook Castle, here in the Isle of Wight, is something out of a fairy tale. But so too is the story of my grandfather's horse warrior. And not many stories told on a mother's knee make it to the wider stage, especially if like that of warrior in our family, the story was once renowned and then lost to the incoming tides of time. Thanks to the PDSA, Warrior rides again 100 years on since he and Jack Seeley sailed to France with little certainty of a safe return. For this was the wildest fiction made amazing fact. How Warrior spent his whole life within sight of the sea on this windy western coast of the Isle of Wight, except for the little four-year interlude when he and Seeley went to France in 1914 to defy bomb, bullet and every meaningful survival statistic to return in glory at the end of 1918. What's more, the success of the warrior story has meant we've been able to commission this magnificent Philip Lacquer bronze of Jack Seeley and Warrior here at Carriesbrook, which is five miles from where Warrior lived and died and indeed spent all of his life with the not inconsequential exception of the four years in France from 1914 to 1918. Warrior and Jack Seeley landed together at Le Havre on August the 11th, 1914. And how the two of them survived the front line right through to 1918 has to be one of the greatest miracles of all the war. From 1915, Jack Seeley commanded the three regiments of the Canadian Cavalry Brigade. And when he and Warrior rode up, the men used to flock round. They'd come up and they'd like to touch him and slap him and say, good old Warrior. And it was as if, because uh, it was so, that they were getting strength from the fact that here was this magnificent thoroughbred who was prepared to stand and face what they had to face. Warrior was the ultimate in survivors. He was under shell fire in August 1914. He was at Ypres. On the first day of the Battle of the Somme, he was waiting to gallop through the famous Gin Gap, which never came. He sank in the mud at Passchendaele. And time after time, shells would explode, horses would be killed beside him. But he came through. He was the lucky one. Throughout the war, Warrior really did display gallantry above and beyond the call of duty and was an inspiration to the soldiers around and behind him as he and they faced bayonets, bullets, gas, tanks and shells. Warrior's greatest moment came on March the 30th, 1918, when he led a crucial cavalry charge against the Germans at Moray Wood near Amiens. And as ultimate proof of his survival, he came back and he won a race at the Isle of Wight, point to point, the date, March the 30th, 1922. In 1941, the Times ran an obituary for him, which is unheard of, really, an obituary for a horse. And it was one of the subheads about it was the horse the Germans couldn't kill. And after he died, they found a note in my grandfather's diary, which read, I do not believe, to quote Byron about his dog, Boston, that he is denied in heaven the soul he had on earth. So for my family, it's impossible to exaggerate how important it is that Warrior should now receive the honorary PDSA Dickin Medal and should now be here at Carriesbrook facing the chapel where 
In the name of my uncle Frank, Jack Seedy's oldest son, stands commemorated as amongst the fallen in the First World War. But Warrior didn't fall. Somehow he withstood everything. And he now stands here as a permanent reminder of what gallantry can do.